Hey friends. <laughs> so, can you imagine <clears throat> walking up to your lover, if you have a lover, um, let's just pretend you do if you don't, and saying, hey, I really love you, but I really would like to change the love handles you have around your waist. And if you would just do that, I would be really happy. <laughs> do you think that you would make that person feel actually that you love them? Or do you think that they would feel like, wow, maybe this person doesn't love me. Maybe I should start looking elsewhere for love, <laughs> for a partner. Well, a lot of times when we go to do self-improvement, we go to improve ourselves. Um, that's what we're saying is I love myself, but if I did this, I would love myself even more. And <clears throat> if you think about it, if you said that to someone who is hurting and trying to heal, like, hey, I love you, but if you would just, you know, lose those love handles, I would love you even more. If that person was trying to heal, it would probably be a lot harder to heal by hearing the voice of someone we love say something like that to us. So in our journey of self-love, a lot of times we decide, I need to improve myself, that's how I'm going to love myself. If I just improve myself, then I'll love myself. And what we're saying is, is I don't accept you for who you are right now, but I can accept you if you do this and that and this and that. And that's not really self-love because that's not how we would love anyone else. Somehow instinctively we know that that's not loving someone else and yet we accept that kind of love from ourselves towards ourselves and we wonder why we don't feel comforted whenever we feel disgust towards ourselves in any way it comes back to some childhood pain that happened before we were eight years old. So think about telling an eight-year-old that it's too, it's got too much chunk on its love handles around its waist. Imagine telling an eight-year-old child that it's too heavy, that child is too heavy, and you would love it even more if it would just lose that fat around its waist. Would you ever say that to an eight-year-old child? I doubt it. At one time in your life, you were younger than eight years old, and somebody hurt you and made you feel inadequate and helped you create stories of things that weren't true. So our goal in this healing journey is actually to radically accept and love ourselves for exactly who we are and exactly where we're at at this point in time. We may never change. We may never change. And yet we should love ourselves for who we are. No matter. No matter if we never change. We can do that inner child work. We can love that child. 
We can comfort that child. We can go back in time and change that experience. We may always <clears throat> deal with that experience. We may never fully let that experience go. But that doesn't mean we're not worthy of love. I know very few people <clears throat> that if they saw a broken-hearted child crying, they wouldn't try to comfort that child. <laughs> so when that child is crying in you, when you're feeling the pain of this world, the pain of not being enough, ask yourself, when was the last time I felt this? And then continue back. When was the last time I felt this? When was the last time I felt this? So the first time you may say next week, the next time you may say six months ago, you may say at 23, you may say at 18, you may say at 16, and you may all go all the way back to three, four, five years old. You may even go all the way back to the womb, depending on how you're feeling and what you're feeling. And when you get back as far as you can go, realize that the reason that you're feeling what you're feeling at this specific point in time, the reason that you have the feelings that you have now of inadequacy, of not being able to love yourself, of self-hatred, all of those things goes back all the way back to that time period. And if you can go back and comfort that child, hold that child, not judge that child, not say, just get over it. What the fuck's wrong with you? You're an adult now. No. Go back to that eight-year-old, that three-year-old, and say, oh my God, there's no way that you had the skills to deal with that. There's no way that you should have gone through that. I love you. I'm here for you. I'll always be here for you. I've been here for you from the beginning. You just didn't know me yet. I love you. And look at this. We're okay. We're 45 years old. We've made it through so many things. I'm so proud of you. I love you so much. You're a beautiful being. <laughs> if we begin to treat ourselves like that, we'll heal, we'll radically accept ourselves, and healed people, radically healed people who radically accept themselves for exactly who they are, those are the people that begin to change the world. Not only can we heal <laughs> and find true peace and love, but we can help heal the world, help those that we love have a better place to live in. So, friends, I would encourage you to radically love yourselves, radically accept yourselves, and live lives of freedom and joy and peace and authenticity. Much love.